Ah, good morning everybody in Facebook land and wherever you may be listening from. This is the new official New Idea Recordings YouTube channel. I'm coming to you live from in New Idea Recording Studio here in Warner Robins, Georgia. Um, as many of you may know, and some of you may not actually because the Facebook algorithms that I've been using only allow you to tag and post to so many people at a time. So if you've missed anything that's been going on, I sincerely apologize. I'll try to catch up with you. But um, the big news is I'm coming out with a new single here in the next day or so. Um, the title of the song is called Andersonville. It's been a while since I've put anything out from the studio. I've done some, some minor work, some commercials, and uh, I was working with a, um, a young man by the name of Adriel Carrion, who is a uh, former um, American Idol contestant. Um, we're still working on his project. He's got a lot of stuff going on. He just moved up into North Georgia. He was here in Warner Robins for a while. But um, anyway, i um, been doing a lot of stuff. And um, so let's talk about Andersonville for just a little bit. Um, you know, with, with any song, when you do a recording, um, people like to know, well, what, what's the song about? How did you, how did you come up with this? Where did it come from? Where is the storyline? Who are all the people involved? So we're going to talk about Andersonville for just a minute. Um, the Andersonville historic site is a civil war. Um, it was an actual prisoner camp, um, otherwise known as Fort Sumter. It was probably one of the deadliest civil war prison camps, um, in history. Um, originally, there were 13,000 graves um, that were actually documented, um, and in the song, you'll hear the uh, you'll hear the number of 13,000. Now, Andersonville over the years has grown tremendously, um, and there are probably it's probably in the 20s of thousands now of those who are buried there. Um, there are many many unknown soldier graves that have been there, um, and so Andersonville twice a year does a couple different um, events to pay homage to uh, all of the, uh, the prisoners of war, the missing in action, and all those unknown soldiers. Um, you know, a lot of family and friends don't even visit those, those graves anymore. And so organizations like Wreaths for America, um, they come in once a year around the Christmas time, and they hand make literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, um, of wreaths and they load them all into semi-trucks and they go to the different historical areas and, and cemeteries and we put, uh, we put those wreaths in front of every single stone in the cemetery. If you've ever been involved um, in one of, those, uh, one of those events, it's pretty, it's pretty awe-inspiring really. Um, the first time I went was with the Warner Robins Jeep Club uh, you'll see plenty of Jeeps in, the, uh, in, in, in my video as well. But it all started, we had, uh, we had come to um, the Memorial Day event, which is the placing of the flags, just like, just like at Christmas time when they put the, 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 the wreaths down. Um, they also do flags at Memorial Day in front of every single stone. And when you first get there, you look at it and you're like, wow, we are going to absolutely be here forever. This is going to take all day because there's literally just acres and acres of, um, of gravestones. And, um, but once you get, once you get going, um, they limit it to, th to 300 volunteers, um, according to their webpage. I'm not sure if that's the fact anymore, because I swear I've seen more than 300 people out there putting, uh, putting flags down because it goes really quick. Actually within just a couple hours, um, the whole entire the whole entire place is just covered in flags. It's really amazing. So we went there uh, the first year, and uh, it just so happens that my my wife's father, Captain James Heron, is also buried at Andersonville. And so it was kind of a twofold thing. We went there with the Jeep Club to lay flags um, along all the other stones, but we came there to see Sherry's father as well. And um, so along with that, there are Jeep Club members who have their loved ones um, who are buried there as well. Um, the Jeep Club president, Brad Nybrand, um, Brad's father um, is also buried there. And so we go to his grave and, and, and Brad's, Brad's kind of a talker. And he likes to share, he likes to share stories. And so you'll hear um, as you listen to the song that a couple things happen. Um, you'll see that, uh, that I show up um, at Sherry's father's grave. Um, you'll see Brad talking to people. And um, so this whole thing was kind of, you know, this is kind of my story of what I saw through my eyes. 
And um, I learned something tremendous. And the biggest, the biggest part of the song that really, really impacted me um, was as we were placing flags in front of stones, I noticed that there were, there were coins on top of these stones. And I really had no idea what the significance was, but the significance is actually really great. Um, it goes in order from penny, nickel, dime, and quarter. And so as you're walking, if you see a penny on a gravestone, it just simply means that you, you visited that stone. Um, if you find a nickel on that stone, then it means that the person was actually in boot camp with the person who was there. Um, if there's a dime on the stone, then that means that that person served with that person most likely in the same unit. And if there's a quarter on the stone, and um, this is the real, the real tearjerker of them all, um, it means that they were actually in battle with that person. They died on the battle. He died next to that person on the battlefield or that, that same, that same time. And that's really, um, that really kind of hits you, hits you in the gut. And um, a lot of times, you know, you're walking and you may see the stones, you may see the coins, but I actually got to be involved and witness um, an elderly man who was kind of struggling along. He was in a, he was in a wheelchair, and he tried to get up, and he tried to get to the stone, and, and he, he, he just couldn't make it. And so I, I walked over, and I introduced myself, and I said, can I, can I help you? And he says, I'd like you to place this stone, put this stone over there, uh, this quarter, put this coin on the stone over there for me. And so I had, I had no idea till later on that day. Um, I was talking with the Jeep Club president, Brad, and he said, hey, man, I saw you over there with that guy. What was going on? And I said, well, you know, he wanted me to, to put, put a quarter on the stone. And he was like, what? You know, and so he explained, he explained to me the significance. And I just really had no idea at that time. And so I placed, a, I placed his quarter on that stone. And after I, after I realized what had, what had happened and what it, what it meant, um, it's just really amazing. And so that's where the whole, that's where the whole storyline of the song comes in. And you will notice uh, later as I re as I recreate the scene with the uh, I met a frail old man in faded fatigues. You will notice that the name on Sherry's father's headstone is also the same name on the fatigues of the man sitting in that chair. And um, so the man who is sitting in that chair is uh, is uh, retired uh, retired master chief. I think he's a master sergeant. I'm not sure, Master, Master Chief. Anyway, um, retired Air Force, and uh, that's, uh, that's Jerry Heron. And Jerry is uh, Sherry's dad's brother, Sherry's uncle. And, um, and so it was, uh, it was kind of, there, there, there's some definite family connections that are um, sewn throughout the writing of the song. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to uh, get a shout out there to everybody. Um, I do want to take a minute and, and give some props to some really special people who helped me along in the project. Um, we'll start out, I'll start it in order of, of how the video, the video starts. Um, Brian Sykes, um, he was the, uh, the young man who starts out playing the, uh, we couldn't find a, an actual bugle, so he's actually recreating it with a trumpet. Um, he actually played a, a modified version of Taps in the, in the track for me. Um, Mary Ann Sweeney, um, she played violin on the track, did an absolutely wonderful job. And the other outside studio musician that I want to give props to is Gary Martin out of Indiana. Um, Gary Martin is a tremendously talented, gifted uh, pedal steel player. And um, I actually took my track and emailed it to him. And uh, I just PayPal him like $150, you know. And uh, he sends me like three or four versions of the track. He just plays it over and over. And he says, Jeff, you can just take this track and just pick it apart and piece it however you want. You know, pick the best of the best. And so he makes it really easy. And uh, so we put this whole track together. And um, it's been really cool. Um, again, special shout outs to um, Eddie, my videographer, Eddie Wingerstein. Um, I actually this morning took the... Uh, the second, the second audio track. The first one I made wasn't quite up to up to snuff as far as the volume goes um, for Red Book standards, and so I gave Eddie the uh, the track this morning, and um, he was at a uh, Center Point Church where he does a lot of video and audio stuff there too. He does an amazing job for their team, and so I gave the track to him this morning, and hopefully, 
hopefully sometime today or later tonight, tomorrow, um, he'll have the final, the final cut. We had some little, um, just, you know, some, some finite things that we went through on the track. And, um, so hopefully we get everything together. Um, while I'm at it, please like the page, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, as time goes on, I'm going to start doing a lot of other things, some tutorials, um, stuff with audio, podcasts maybe. Um, I'm going to start doing some interviews for those folks that have been here before or new people that are going to be coming and doing business with me. So um, it's going to be a really exciting time here. I'm really, I'm really excited to see, what, uh, to see what's going to happen. So anyway, um, look forward to the video. It's coming out within the next day or two, and I hope everybody likes it. We'll talk to you soon.